There's no way this episode is as interesting as the last one, but I'm still gonna try. So first, the architecture in the dancer's room is flammable, and not just from her weapons, but from ours as well. This fire spreading effect exists all throughout Lothric Castle, and it stops when you reach the Grand Archives, and then it starts again in the Twin Prince's boss fight, on two chairs in particular, these ones, the ones on their sides. I spent a lot of time hitting chairs with a torch today. And to be honest, I wish this mechanic was built into way more wooden structures, maybe with the ability to deal damage if enemies got too close to the fire. I think the game could really benefit from more environmental effects, more distraction effects, things like that. Second, do you remember this moment in one of the really old Dark Souls trailers? An elite knight does the quiet resolve emote as they walk away, and this same emote is given to us by Anri in Dark Souls 3, a character who wears the elite knight set and really embodies that same sentiment, that same courage, because Anri is a character who dedicatedly pursues her and Horus's quest against Aldrich, even after Horus's passing. Third, after we kill the Abyss Watchers, Hawkwood, a fellow unkindled, he thanks us for helping them find their final resting place, and after they're dead, Hawkwood, the crestfallen, looks away and leaves to find his purpose. We see him next outside the fight with Osiris, and I bet this is where he comes across the Way of the Dragon emote. And then, Hawkwood can be summoned atop the Archdragon Peak, and you might not have done this with him, but he actually performs the Way of the Dragon emote here, obtaining his own Twinkling Dragon headstone, while you obtain the Twinkling Dragon torso stone. After talking with Andre, Hawkwood can be confronted aside the corpses of his fellow legionnaires, where you fight for the title of the True Dragon. And most curiously, if you lose here, Hawkwood will actually take the Twinkling Dragon Torso Stone from your inventory, until you manage to defeat him and steal it back. I thought it was really interesting that the game really shows you his path throughout the world. Moving on, for number 4, it's obvious that the Nameless King is Gwyn's firstborn, the god of war who led the Warriors of Sunlight, but as an awesome piece of extra evidence, did you notice that the Sunlight Medal sigil is all throughout Archdragon Peak, printed on these silver plates? Another thing I discovered when going over character dialogue, did you know that Ludleth has some seriously tricky to receive dialogue? If you kill him, and then reload the area and go close to him, then he'll be asleep, he'll be dreaming, and he'll be muttering this. Ah. Uh. It cincheth to the bone. It hurts. Please help me. Be done with me. No, God, no. I cannot bear it. It burns, burns. Help me. Ah, beg pardon. I must have dozed a while. Is he having nightmares about the time he linked the fire, maybe? Interestingly, if you initiate this post-death dialogue with him after you defeat the Dragon Slayer armor, then he says this as well. See you not? I, I am a lord. A, a wee flame. Belike. But I shoulder the world. Forgive me. I am not to blame. I'm not. Ludleth is a fascinating character. There's surely more to him that needs to be revealed. He's this lord who exists in an alternate version of a shrine where he states that he painted a new vision of the world. And while he's really proud of how he linked the flame, he also displays this supreme amount of guilt and pain in his nightmares. Something is going on here, and I hope it's elucidated in the DLC. 6. True to Patch's deep lore, his dialogue changes when you start the game as a cleric. Every rotten cleric's dream, right? Next, 
I'm sure by now a lot of you know that the Calamity Ring can be obtained by performing the Way of the Dragon emote at this statue. But more importantly, do you think that they're poking fun at the players in the description? This ring has no useful powers and is merely a symbol of dragon worship, a thing quietly passed down amongst its most fervent adherents, some of whom become convinced the task has been bestowed upon them as a sacred duty. This is a ring that makes you take double damage, and in the last episode we talked a little bit about how they might be doing this same thing with the pendant, where they poke fun at people who are convinced that these items mean something. And I bet they're doing it here as well, because a lot of people thought this ring meant something in Dark Souls 1, but it didn't. For number 8, did you ever pay attention to this corpse? dead at the first bonfire in the profaned capital, surrounded by ladders? It's Lattersmith Gilligan from Dark Souls 2, a beloved and complex character who sold ladders that helped you access a place that you could just drop down into. Yeah, he's pretty forgettable. Anyway, him being here is pretty funny, actually. Once again, he's surrounded by ladders and at least some of them are useful this time. For number 9, I'd be surprised if you managed to find a bunch of items that appear on corpses after you've killed their corresponding NPCs. For example, the Pale Shade set appears in Firelink Shrine if you've defeated this invader in Farren Keep and Irithyll. Kirk's Barbed set appears near Rosaria if you kill his phantom in the Cathedral. Havel's set appears near the Stray Demon once the Havel Knight is dead in the real world. Hodrick's set is found upon his corpse in the Pit of Hollows after Cirrus's questline, and Cirrus's sunless talisman is found on a grave outside our shrine once her quest is complete. Her grandfather's shield can also be found here. And finally, one of my favourite sets, which is Creighton's Mirror Chain set, is found upon the bridge after you kill him in Cirrus's world and your own as well. I'll leave wiki links to all of these in the description below if you want to find them. For the Lord of Hollows ending, you sacrifice your fellow unkindled Unri and claim her dark sigils for your own. But did you know that Unri appears in the ending cutscene? You can spot him or her here, and additionally some people have stated that Unri appears without armour for them in a hollow state. But I was never able to reliably replicate this glitch. But anyway, the implications from this are that Unri lives on if you want to call being hollow living. So we started last episode off with the discovery that the dancers' sound clips could be reversed so that you could hear their original sound. And now, a week or two later, user Center is back with more fascinating sound findings and I just can't help but talk about these again. So the Crystal Sages, for example, sound like they're saying, release me now, when this clip is reversed. The Deacons sound like they're in a lot of pain. And this is what it sounds like when hundreds of curses are stuffed inside a spirit tree. And there are a bunch more creepy, haunting, and illuminating sound effects that you can listen to, so go and check out that link in the description. For 12, did you know that you can combine the two swords of the Twin Princes of Lothric to create the Twin Princes Greatsword? This requires New Game Plus, and if you have both of the swords from two Twin Princes souls, then just bring them to Ludleth and he'll transpose them together. Within the weapon art of this new greatsword is both the Sacred Light of Lothric and the Flame of Lorien. Next, there are quite a few NPCs that have hard to find endings to their quest. First, did you know that Orbeck can appear in the Grand Archives if you purchase all of his spells? He can even help you with the Lothric boss fight if you do this, and afterwards you'll find his corpse sitting at a table beside these candlestick scholars. Also in the Grand Archives is Greyrat's corpse, if you manage to keep him alive after his outing to Irithyll. 
Third, if you only purchase light miracles from Arena, then she'll eventually become a mute firekeeper, moving to the bottom of the tower to the side of the Firelink Shrine, and she can even level you up if you desire. Let souls be your strength. Lastly, at the end of Unri's quest to kill Aldrich, Unri hollows, her duty fulfilled. Now, heed this little warning from this little lord. Seek not the girl. She knoweth her fate, what will become of her upon her duty's end. She would not wish thee follow her. After receiving her sword she left with Ludleth, Anri can be followed to her grave in two places. If you told her where you found Horus, then she will decide that her grave should be beside his, and if you never told her where to find Horus, then she will hollow atop this lonely hill outside the Cathedral of the Deep, a place that probably has some meaning to her, because this is where her early life was within the Cathedral of the Deep. For 14, did you know that it's possible to stagger Yorm to the point where you can perform a critical attack? This reminds me so much of Bloodborne, especially if you do it with a fist weapon like the user Cleopatra, who pointed this out the other week. For 15, I want to give a bit of a teaser for an upcoming video that I'm planning on doing in collaboration with everyone's favorite translator, Loremaster Noja. We've done a few translation videos in the past. In the research for the Angels of Lothric and the Hollows of Londor video, we discovered that Yuria's line God, I have failed thee. actually translates more accurately to Karth, your dying wish wasn't done. So does this mean that Karth, the primordial serpent that many assumed was immortal, might actually be dead? This Japanese is drastically different from the English, at any rate. So all this and more will come out in a full translation video, where we go over the fascinating little discrepancies between the English and the Japanese. But we might wait until the DLC comes out, I think, because then we'll have access to all of the descriptions. But I'd love it if you could throw Lawmaster Noja a follow on Twitter or something. He's been this huge help to me, and he's currently working on an indie game project that looks really interesting so far. But thank you for watching this one, guys. Um, I think we're finally ahead of the schedule with videos a bit now. Um, there should always be a video out for patrons whenever I release a new video, so become a patron if you want a bit of early access. But yeah, hopefully I can get back into more of a regular schedule now for once in my life. Uh, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.